Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jackie. And let's get into some gingerbread DIYs. For DIY number one, I'm taking two sets of these burner covers from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to adhere them with this super glue epoxy. And so all I'm going to do is open it up, remove the little plastic piece with scissors. And I'm just going to mix it right on the surface. So I'm going to press and allow some of it to come out. And then with my bamboo skewer, I will mix it up right on the surface itself. That way I'm skipping one whole step and not making a big mess. <laughs> so here I'm just going to attach these burner covers back to back like this. And I'll do the same with the larger set until they both look like this. So they're just back to back. So now I'm going to allow them to dry overnight and cure. And now I'm going to go in with some of these wooden beads okay. from the Dollar Tree. So all I'm going to do is take this bead, take these beads and wrap it around the sides of these burner covers and try to figure out how much of the string I'm going to need, the jute twine, and snip off the excess and also remove any excess beads that are in the way because I'm going to need to do a good double knot to secure them well. So here I'm just going to tie them up as tight as I can and make my double knot and snip off the excess twine like this. And once the wooden beads are put in place, I'm going to very gently pull up the strand of beads and add a bead of glue in the center of the two burner covers. And I'm going to adhere these beads onto that glue. I wanna make sure these beads are not going to be spinning around or jiggling around or oh, whatever beads do, I don't know. <laughs> So here, I'm just going to go all the way around and I'll do this to both. So now here I'm taking a piece of parchment paper and I'm going to fold it in this manner to create or to uh, find the center point of these burner covers. When I make tear trays, there's usually some indication on the plate or the charger or whatever piece I'm going to use for the tray. There's usually some kind of uh, markings that gives me an idea where the center is, but not with these burner covers there's no markings at all so i'm just doing this to create the center point to try to find the center point so i can have my tear tray nice and even and looking pretty so here i'm folding it in half now i know where the center is and i'm just going to create a little dot with my sharpie and i do this to the second one as well the smaller one because i was going to do a three-tiered tear tray but then i just decided to do just two tiers so disregard this other step here, but I'm just showing it to you just to review, how, you know, how to find the center point to a circle. Because once you have these folded, you'll fi you figure out where the center is. So like this. And now I'm taking one of these ceramic vases from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to adhere this vase to these sets of burner covers with some E6000. And I do a little bit of hot glue on the two opposite ends. And so now I can place it in the center perfectly now that I know where the center point is. And now I'll do the same to the top part. I'll add some E6000 for that long lasting hold and then the hot glue for the immediate hold. So a little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue here, and then add my top part to it until it looks like this. Look how cute. Okay, so now I'm going to take this Rust-Oleum paint and it's in the color brown and I'm going to paint it outside do a full coverage like this and now I'm going to go in with some of the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and with my chippy brush my chunky chippy brush from the Dollar Tree I'm going to dry brush this whole piece now here it looks like I'm going a little bit too strong too heavy but I end up remedying it with a little bit of the Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle so later on you'll see that it's more more toned down it's not so it's not so heavy as this is showing but yeah this this got a little heavy <laughs> but you know there's always ways to remedy things and so I'll do a dry brush on this whole piece on the beads on the rim on the inside on the edges the whole thing until it looks like this and this gingerbread tear tray is basically done and we'll get a better look at it at the final reveal so DIY number two I'm taking one of these little they're called a breadboard by the Dollar Tree, but it looks like a cutting board to me. So I'm going to take this little cutting board <laughs> and I'm going to go in with this Waverly varnish 
and so i'm doing this because i'm this is going to be a chalk couture project Here, i'm going to do the little gingerbread man that's in my little minis pack and i'm just going to remove it from the backing and put it on my fuzzy cloth a good three four times to help get rid of some of the excess stickiness this is the process so in here now i'm going to add my transfer onto my little wooden piece my little cutting board and i'm going to go in with a couple of colors i don't have all the colors that i need just yet but i'm going to use this orange peel color and i'm going to add a little bit to this dish and then i'll add a little bit of the shimmering gold color so yeah if you don't have the color you need mix up your own color yeah why not so here's the shimmering gold and i'll add that on there this much just a tiny little bit this chalk paste goes a long long way so here i'm just going to mix it up with my little squeegee like this get a good mix and now it's time to do the chalking so i'm just taking the chalk paste and just placing it on the transfer doing a good coverage covering the whole little gingerbread man from head to toe scraping off the excess because we can reuse the excess and now we can remove the transfer and look at that oh my goodness so adorable and add your transfer to a little thing of water so it won't dry up look how cute oh my goodness so now i wanted to put on their merry christmas and so this transfer has the merry christmas on it it also has some trees but i'm going to just use the merry christmas on it so again i'm putting this on the fuzzing cloth to remove any of the excess stickiness and of course my little gingerbread man is dry at this point so i'm going to place this transfer to where it just mary mary will be revealed and with some painter's tape, I will cover up anything that I do not want to have the chalk touch and be transferred onto my project. And now I'm going to go in with a candy red. And this, this stuff is so strong. Oh my goodness, it's so, so strong. And I'm just going to add a little bit to my squeegee. And I'm just going to very carefully just place it on the word Mary. So as you can see here. I'm doing a really good coverage, making sure all the letters and the whole word is covered. And now removing the transfer tape. Look at that. Mary. So now I'm going to rinse it off and now place Christmas underneath the little gingerbread man. And I'll do the same thing. Take some of that red, place it on my little squeegee and just rub it on. Rub it on the whole piece that says Christmas like this. But look at this it's so easy and oh my goodness it, the outcome is beautiful so now it's time to remove the transfer and here we go Ta-da! beautiful so now i'm going to go in with some of this candy cane ribbon from the dollar tree and i'm just going to create a little bow just a real quick little bow and this will be a part of my embellishments you guys know i love to do my embellishments so here i'm just nipping off the excess and i do dovetail both ends like this and now i just add a little dab of glue on the back and adhere it to the base of my little handle look how cute and i had this little embellishment left over from actually from last christmas it's just a little piece of evergreen with a little bit of a couple little pieces of berries and i'm slipping off the excess and giving it giving it a little trim it's a little too fuzzy for me so i'm just going to give it a little trim make it look a little bit more dainty and a little bit more high-end and after his little haircut, then I'll add a little bit of glue to the back and place this on the center of my bow. Look how adorable! For DIY number three, I'm taking these cute wooden ornaments from the Dollar Tree and I'm taking them apart, removing the lights and everything. And I've done these before for another project, but I thought they were so cute. I have to do them again, especially with this little gingerbread house. Really cute, it fits in my gingerbread theme. So I'm going to paint them all in the color Nutmeg by Apple Barrel. And I'll just paint them up like this. And now that they're all painted, I'm going to actually put them back together. Because I just wanted to give them a full paint job, full coverage paint job. So I'm just going to add some hot glue where the pieces were joined together before. And I'm just going to clear them and put them back the way they were. But at least now they're fully covered. So I'll do the little house and I'm going to do this little reindeer. 
And I'm going to call this reindeer Rudolph because I'm going to give him a little red nose. I think he'd be so cute, the little red nose. So here I'm just taking the glue and I'm going to adhere them back together the way they were. Gives them a little bit more stability to stand on their own. So now I'm going to go in with this apple barrel paint in the color white. And I'm just going to do some detail painting with this. I'm going to paint the roof line of the gingerbread house in the white and the sides of the gingerbread house and around the windows and the inside of the windows and then the very bottom, the very base of this house. And I'll do the same kind of outlining with or for the little reindeer as well. I'll go all the way around his whole little body and then the whole area of the antlers, I'll paint those white as well. And now I'm going to go in with this puffy paint that I found at the Dollar Tree. It's a 3D and it's actually for fabric, but I figured, hey, if it's 3D and if it's going to be puffy, it's going to be perfect for my little gingerbread house. So I'm just going to add it on here to the little roof line and to the base where it'll look like a snowbank and also to the antlers of little Rudolph. And I don't show it, but I did add a little bow on him, give him a little bit of embellishments. So for this DIY, I am taking two of these foam rollers, hair rollers from the Dollar Tree, and I'm taking some peppermint stripe fabric, and I'm going to kind of guesstimate how much I'm going to need. You can very easily measure this if you need to, but I don't know. I always like to just guesstimate, and I don't know. It's just how I am. Maybe because my mother was a seamstress. I don't know. <laughs> But here I'm just cutting a piece that I think I'm going to need and cutting it in half so I have enough for both of these little rollers like this. And we are going to be making little candy canes with these. So here after I cut them in half, then I'm going to take one, put a bead of glue in the very center of this piece of fabric. I'm going to add the little foam curler on top. And then I'm going to add some more glue on one end, nice long bead of glue. And I'm gonna, going to roll it onto the fabric and I'm going to massage the glue in. That way it won't be bulky. And now I'll do the same thing to the other side. I'll add a bead of glue down the side of the piece of fabric and I'll roll it, this piece, onto that part of the glue until the other end is nice and secure on there as well. And so now it can be formed to whatever candy cane shape you'd like. And that is it. Now it's time for the final reveal of my little gingerbread tear tray. For DIY number one, I'm taking this ordinary pool noodle and my finger utility knife and I'm going to cut this in half and that way it's a little bit more manageable and then after that I'll cut it in various sizes like this. So now I'll go in with some Mod Podge, the matte Mod Podge and that is because I'm about to spray paint it and if you don't add Mod Podge before you spray paint it, the spray paint will eat it up. Yes, it's true. <laughs> okay, so here I am taking a mop handle and I am placing my pool noodle pieces in this mop handle so I can spray paint it easily. And just like this, 
and look right here is where I didn't do a very good job with the Mod Podge and you can see where it was starting to eat it up but the rest of it looks good okay so now I'm going to try and fit these LED lights on the inside of these pool noodles so I'm using my knife again and cutting up some of the insides of the pool noodle until I can get this LED candle to fit inside just like this and I'll do that to the rest of them and now I'm going to go in with some hot glue and I'm going to carefully place this glue on the top perimeter of these well they're going to be candles <laughs> these pool noodles that will become candles and I'll also do some drip effects just to make it look like it's melting and it's going everywhere but of course these strips are going to be beautiful because they're going to be icing well at least the look the look of icing so just keep working it and make short drips long drips until they all look like this and now we're going to go ahead and paint all these drips and we'll go in with some of this apple barrel paint in the color snow white and so just take a small detail brush and pour some paint in a little glass container and just start painting until they all look like this look how cute looks like icing looks like gingerbread with fresh icing on top and I didn't show it but I added glitter on top as well because yes you have to have a little sparkle okay so here I'm putting my LED lights inside which let me tell you don't do that <laughs> don't do that until you're ready to light them up because it's a pain to get them out <laughs> it's a tight fit I'm thinking a better choice would probably be some remote control lights probably yeah <laughs> Okay, so they look like this when they're all put together and look how cute they are looking. Oh my goodness, they look like they look good enough to eat, I think. They look so good. So here I'm trying to figure out which placement I want to put them in. And I think I'm happy with this placement. And here I put them on this plate, but in the end I didn't like it. I ended up switching it out. But now I'm taking some ribbon from Walmart and I'm going to wrap these candles with this ribbon to keep them all nice and tidy and and that way they don't tip over because after all they are pool noodles and they're not very weighted so I'm just going to add a dab of glue and adhere it and then tighten it up a little bit and adhere the other end and now I'm going to beautify it a little bit more by adding this really pretty bow that I created with the same ribbon so I'll just adhere it to the middle of the front and look how adorable now here I'm going to take four of these gingerbread felt kits and I'm going to double them up to create two stuffed gingerbread men a man and a woman like this I just followed the instructions but I doubled them up and I added my own bows so now I'm ready to embellish my candles so I'll, I'll add my little girl over here on the right and my little boy over here on the left and now I'm going to go in with some of these straws. And these are from the Dollar Tree. Look how beautiful they are. I'm taking two of the candy cane stripe ones and two of these peppermint, these plastic peppermint pieces that I had left over from a previous project. And I'll link them in my description box. So I'm just adding a little bit of glue and adding these straws to them for extra embellishments for my candles. So here I have two, but I ended up doing three, a smaller one and two big ones. So I'll just place them inside like so and look how cute and now I'm going to take these two extra plastic candy canes that I had left over from that previous project that I mentioned earlier and I'm just going to hot glue them to I'll hot glue one to the little boy over here on the left and one on the little girl on the right on her right hand so like this that way they're each holding a candy cane Look how adorable. Oh my goodness, these are so cute. These little kits are so cute. Oh, and I did fill them up with some polyfill, by the way. That's what I filled them up with. Okay, so here are my candles. All I have to do is put them on. And that is it. Super cute. What do you guys think? And a better view and the final reveal. But look how cute. For DIY number two, I am taking a bunch of these empty ribbon spools. And I'm going to try to form towers with them. Because, you know, we all have all these ribbon spools. What do we do with them? Throw them away? No, they have potential. So here I'm just stacking them as I want. Try to do the wider ones on the bottom and then the smaller tiny ones on top. And then I'll go ahead and hot glue them all together like this. So now they're little towers. And I'll go in with my Rust-Oleum paint that I used for my pool noodles as well. I'll paint them up like this. 
and now they're in that gingerbread kind of look color and now I'm going to take some various ribbons I don't use the gold here but I used a bunch of other different ribbons and I will, all I'm going to do is take enough ribbon to cover each of these sections so I'll just I, I, there's no rhyme or reason I just did whatever ribbon would fit and I hot glued them on until they look like this and I also used some candy cane fabric and some white rickrack so now I'm taking this puffy 3d paint and I'm going to go in and paint up all the edges of these what were ribbon spools so I'm just going to take my time and go around each of these little sections and each section will look like this and I'll allow everything to dry in the meantime I'm going to take two packs of these gingerbread men wood cutouts from the Dollar Tree that a very sweet friend sent to me and I'm going to go in with the apple barrel paint and the color nutmeg and I'm going to give them all a full coverage and now I'm taking this black marker from Cricut and I'm just going to simply create a little face on each of these so just two little eyes and a little mouth and then I'm also going to take this puffy paint and I'm going to go in and do a little bit of embellishment embellishments on the little gingerbread men the men I'll do just the sleeves and the pants and on the little girls I'll do little dresses and I'm also going to go in with some of the red puffy paint and I'm going to do little buttons on the little men. Three little buttons. The little girls, I just do everything in white. But the little men, I do the three little buttons. Look how adorable. And here they are, super cute, ready to embellish my little towers. And so here are my little towers, nice and dry. All the puffy paint is nice and dry. It looks like icing, looking delicious. <laughs> and I'm also going to take this mini set of ornaments from Hobby Lobby to help embellish my towers. So they look like this and a better look in the final review. I am taking this DIY fail that looks a little creepy. <laughs> it's supposed to be a toy, a sprinkler, and I'm going to go in with this Rust-Oleum paint in the color brown and I'm going to make it look super cute. Okay, so I'm going to go in with this puffy paint and I'm going to do a little detail around these ovals. I don't do a perfect job, but you know what? When you do icing, is it perfect? Not for me. <laughs> so I'll just go around until I get them all done like this. And now I'm going to take some of this white rickrack and I'm going to adhere some of it on the edge of this top portion and some of it on the bottom portion. And look, it's not looking so creepy anymore. <laughs> Boy, it was really looking creepy. <laughs> Total fail. He's looking kind of cute, but you really won't see his face anyway. So here I am taking this snowflake. It's made out of styrofoam from the Dollar Tree. And I snip off the hanger. And I'm going to go in with my drill because I'm going to make a hole in the center. Because this snowflake is going to become a windmill fan to my fire hydrant that will become a windmill. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm just going to make a hole, get all the stuff out of it. And here I'm going to go in with this metal scraper, paint scraper, putty knife. And I'm going to try to remove this embellishment piece. But really the best way to remove it is with your hands just your fingers and I remove both sides and basically it's just a lot of glue so just peel it off as best you can so here it is just the foam and now I'm going to go in with the apple barrel paint and the color nutmeg just to give it that gingerbread look and just like that look it's all painted all the way around and now I'm going to place one of these embellishments back on because the, the, the other embellishment has such a thick plastic on the other side that my drill would not go through it so I'm just going to use this one here where my drill did go through it. I mean, it probably could have gone through it, but I didn't want to waste so much time with it. So here I'm just placing it on. Give it that look, that snowflake look, gingerbread snowflake frosted look. And now here I'm taking my drill again and I'm going to create a hole in the fire hydrant itself. And then I touch it up with a little bit of paint because it kind of peeled off some of my spray paint. So I just touch it up really quick. Actually, you won't really see it, but I don't know. For me, I just felt like I needed to touch it up. So now I'm going to take this really pretty white and red ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to place it on the center of this windmill structure. So I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue and place it on there like this. And now I'm just taking my scissors and making a hole in the ribbon where my wooden dowel will go in to place my windmill fan. So here I'm taking some more of this really pretty ribbon, this candy cane ribbon, 
and I'm going to cut it lengthwise because I want to embellish the very top of this little well what was a fire hydrant it's got that kind of a nut on top and this ribbon would just make it look really cute so now all I have to do is assemble my windmill and so I'll place my wooden dowel inside the fire hydrant and I'll place my windmill fan which is a snowflake on the wooden dowel and then i'll embellish it with one of these really cute plastic peppermints and this diy is complete look at that super cute from a creepy fail toy diy to a super cute gingerbread windmill i'm taking two packs of these extra large felt gingerbread men and i'm going to make one stuffed gingerbread man just like i did this little ones the small ones i'm going to do the same thing with these two and make them into the one so here i'm just going to adhere on once to add my polyfill so once i get them adhered oh well, here i'm taking some of these embellishments and i'm trying to figure out what i'm going to use i end up just using the little eyes the black eyes and the black mouth and the buttons and then I use my own Rick Rack for the embellishments on the sleeves and the pants. So I'm just going to simply hot glue the eyes on there and the little mouth. Look how cute! And so here, oh, and the little nose. I give them the nose. And these little packs, they come with all the little embellishments, but I just chose what I wanted. So I'm using two of these red buttons, or they're like stars. I don't know what they are. And uh, <laughs> so here I'm taking my own Rick Rack and I'm just going to snip off what I need and place the Rick Rack on the sleeves. I do a double on the sleeves just to make it look even more cute. And I do just a single Rick Rack on each of the legs like this. So just simple hot glue and just place it on there. So here, here it's not stuffed yet. I'm just trying to do the, all the embellishments first. That way I won't have a difficult time once it's stuffed. So here I'm placing the second piece of brick rack and I do end up trimming all the sides as well. You won't see all those pieces sticking up. So here I'm pretty much happy with it. So now I'm going to start stuffing it with my polyfill and I'll do the head first, get it stuffed. Now I didn't have a lot of polyfill available so my gingerbread man won't be so stuffed, but that's okay. It's not Christmas yet. He'll probably be more stuffed after Christmas <laughs> like the rest of us. <laughs> but look how cute so I just I'm just going to kind of tuck in all that polyfill on the top portion of his little body and once I get it to where I think I have enough on the legs then I'll go ahead and start adhering with my hot glue in portions like this and then I do the other side and then that's it he's done he's really cute and I just got to do a little bit more embellishing for him I'm going to give him something to hold on to so I figured I'd give him a little rolling pin so he can bake because he's going to be in the kitchen so I'm taking this little wood rolling pin and I'm going to go in with the Waverly chalk paint and the color crimson for the handles and then I'll take this really cute peppermint stripe fabric to go in the center and once I get that placed then I'll take some of the more of the Rick Rack and just do the edges of the fabric so it'll look nice and finished and then that's it all I have to do now is just adhere it to my little gingerbread man super cute and he is done and now for the final reveal
going to create three Christmas themed risers or pedestals and these will be housing some of my minis for my kitchen. So I'm going to begin with these two ceramic bowls from the Dollar Tree and I'm also going to go in with one of these other bowls and this one came from a thrift store but I thought the color was very similar. They're different in heights. The central one is taller and I'm going to go in with three of these bottle cap, these galvanized bottle cap decor pieces from Crafter Square and all I'm going to do is take some E6000 and adhere these bottle caps to my bowls, to the, to the bottoms of the bowls. So I'll add some glue and then I'll adhere everything together like this. And then I just set them aside to dry and you'll see them again in the final reveal. I'm taking this little set of a cutting board and a rolling pin and I'm going to paint them up in these two colors like this. And I'm going to go in with this really pretty peppermint striped tissue paper. The white part of it is pretty light, pretty, pretty transparent. So it's the reason why I went ahead and painted the little cutting board white. That way the white stripes will show, it will be more defined. And I think that would work. So I'm going to go in with this Mod Podge in the matte. And I'm just going to do a light coat on the top because, because whenever you do Mod Podge and tissue, you have to make sure it's a light, light, light coat. Because the tissue paper is so fine. Although this tissue paper is a little bit it's a little bit more sturdy and I'll link it in my description box for you guys but all I'm gonna do is add the Mod Podge down and set the tissue paper on top and I'll do both sides and now I just set this aside to dry and in the meantime I'll take my little rolling pin and I'll do exactly the same thing I'll use some of this really cute tissue paper I want this to be a matching set and I'll add some Mod Podge and then just very carefully and gently place it on the little rolling pin and then I'll just trim off the excess and allow it to dry and set them aside and here they are nice and dry look how cute the rolling pin is so cute so now I'm going to go in with some of this rick rack that I had on hand but of course I'll link it in my description box for you guys and I'm just going to kind of roughly measure how much I'll need Snip off a couple pieces and I'll adhere them with some hot glue. Look how cute. They are so cute. And now I'm just going to top the little rolling pin with a cute little bow. And that is it for the little rolling pin. Look how adorable. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. Okay, so now we'll continue with the little cutting board. And with the cutting board, now that it's nice and dry, all we have to do is take my little hand sander and sand off the excess tissue paper. So I'll just keep working this until it all comes off. And now it's time to do a little bit of embellishing. So I'm going to go back in with my cute little Rick Rack. I love this stuff. It's so cute. And I'm just going to do a rough measure for the bottom border. And I'll do one for the top as well. And I'll just adhere it with some hot glue. And look how cute and now I just go in with this really sweet little wooden gingerbread man that I had in my stash he's so adorable he used to be an ornament but look how cute perfect fits in there perfectly and I'll just sit here with some hot glue and then I created a little bow and I'll put that on the top and we'll call this DIY complete look how adorable and we'll see it again in the final reveal I'm going to take 24 of these tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to go in with some of the Elaine's Tacky Glue. I prefer the Tacky Glue as opposed to the hot glue because there won't be any gaps in between the blocks. And I adhered the tumbling tower blocks till I had 12 of these little bundles. And now I'm going to start gluing them together. So I'll do two bundles together until I have four bundles like this. And then I'm going to take an extra little set here and I'll glue it to the end of one of the bundles, the doubled bundles. So essentially I'll have two singles, two doubles, and three triples like this. And now all I'm going to do is add some glue to the top 
And mind you, these are still kind of wet, but they hold pretty well. So I'll now double them up because I'm creating blocks. So I'll have a single block, a double block, and a triple block. And I just painted them white with the sides being brown. So now I'm going to go in with my same really cute peppermint stripe tissue paper. And just like this, look how they're done. Super cute. And again, I'll go in with some more of this Rick Rack. I really like this little look. And I'll just put a little border on each side of these blocks. Like this. And now here they are all nice and dry. And they are stackable to go on my tear tray. And look how cute. So I'm going to assemble them in a manner where it creates like a little chevron look just to make things a little bit different so i'm just going to adhere them together with some hot glue until they look like this and now i'm just going to go in with these little wooden gingerbread men that i had left over from my last video actually and i'm going to take this little girl one and i'm going to add a nice big bow on her head she's going to represent my granddaughter and i'll place her on the very top because she's the oldest and she's the little princess <laughs> so she goes on the very top like this and then i'll take the little boys and i'll just place them there's four little boys to represent my grandsons and i'll just place them on the sides so i'll just adhere them one by one until they look like this look how cute i'm going to begin with a handful of these brown hair beads from the dollar tree and then I purchased this variety pack on Amazon and I'm going to go in with some red ones, some white ones, and then this pack happened to have some red and white striped ones. And they even had a few of the red and white peppermint looking ones too. So I'll use these to create a garland. Of course, I have to create a garland. I haven't done one yet and I'm doing different DIYs in these videos to do a gingerbread peppermint themed kitchen. So that's what's all, what this is all about. In case you're wondering why so many videos. <laughs> because there's stuff I want and so I'm going to make it. So here I'm going to take this Baker's Twine in the red and white and this long needle. I think I got this one from Joann's. It's just a needle. And I'm going to start threading these beads in this manner in this pattern and I'll do this whole bunch until they look like this so I'll snip off the excess and I'm going to take this end and I'm going to tie it to a little tag that I painted white and I'll just secure it really well with a double knot and once I get that nice and secure then I'll just take the excess string and I'll thread it back through the first couple of beads just to make sure it's nice and secure and it's not going to go anywhere. And now I'll just snip off any excess twine that's sticking out of the second bead. And now I'll just create a quick little tassel for the other end and I'll just wrap it around my hand a good 20 times or so, snip off the excess twine put the baker's twine through the loops of the two twine and secure it with a triple knot that way it'll be nice and secure and now all I have to do is create the tassel itself by taking some more of my two twine and wrapping it at the top of the tassel and I'll just wrap it tight and secure it with another double knot and now I just snip off the ends and I'll go ahead and cut open the bottom loop and give it a nice little haircut because whenever you cut them they're not even <laughs> so here they are nice and cute so now I'm taking some of this really cute lacy ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to snip off a nice loop and I have this really cute red and white gingham ribbon as well and I'll cut about the same length or so and I'm just going to add this to my tassel just to give it a nice little embellished look. So I'll just place it alongside the tassel. In hindsight, it might have been better to 
have done this when I was creating the tassel, but it was like an afterthought. <laughs> it was like, oh, let me try this. But I make it work because I just place it on there and I'll take some more of my two twine and I'll tie these ribbons onto the tassel on the top. And then I'll take my needle and I'll thread the baker's twine piece that's sticking out back through the needle. And then with my needle, I'll put the baker's twine through the two ribbons and back through the bead, the top bead. And I secure it with a nice double knot again and snip off the excess. And look how cute. It doesn't even look like I added anything else to it. Like I made it like that. And now we have to embellish the little tag. And I had one more little gingerbread man. So he went right on the tag. And that is it. Super cute. Begin with 20 of these tumbling tower blocks, one of these wooden frames, and one of these wooden planks of this size, the longer ones, just one. So I'm going to begin by removing the little stand to this picture frame, photo frame, and I'm going to remove the inside parts, including the little clamps or clips, whatever those are. And so now I'm, I'm going to take some Aileen's Tacky Glue and I'm going to make two towers of 10 like this. So here's two. They're not joined together. There's just two towers. And now here's my circle piece from the frame and it measures four inches. So my halfway point is two inches. So I'm taking my ruler and marking my halfway point for this circle. So now I'm going to take this utility knife from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to attempt to cut through. It does cut through pretty good. It's just there's like double piece of wood in there where it makes the frame. So I'm going to go in with this little hammer that I have and I just basically beat it on there. <laughs> take out all the aggressions and you know what? It worked because it cut right through it. Now I wouldn't have a problem otherwise, but the fact that it's doubled, it's like doubled. So here I cut it in half and now I'm going to take my plank and score that a few times until it breaks like a cracker and I'll finish cutting it off and I'll sand off the rough edges and remove any uneven pieces until I get it the way I want it. So here. Now I have it all ready. So I'm taking one of my arches and I'm going to take these cubes. I believe I used seven. So I'm going to go in with some hot glue just because I wanted to get this done. So I'm going to add one on each corner and then three in the center and then two more in the center part of that. So yes, that's seven. 
and I'll do this to the second arch as well like this so now I'm going to begin to assemble my little wood oven and so I'm going to add some hot glue to the side of this plank and adhere one of my little towers and I'll do the same thing to the second side add some glue to the plank add the second tower like this and now I'm going to add these arches but I ended up taking them off in a little bit you'll see where I took them off but like this they kind of look like a mouth <laughs> don't they look like teeth oh my goodness so funny so here I'm just assembling this little oven to bake my gingerbread men but in a little bit you'll see that I decided to remove it to add a rack because it's a little bit easier to add the rack without that arch okay so here I removed the arch and here I'm going to cut the excess of this piece of wood I wanted to leave it long but then I decided I wanted an extra rack and I didn't want to get another plank so I'm going to utilize this extra piece and this will be one of my racks so again I just cut it in the same manner and here go ahead and take this little extra piece and I'm just going to adhere it to the inside and it'll be one of my racks. I end up doing two racks. So here's the first one and I go ahead and, and secure it with a little bit more hot glue. I usually don't like to do that but this one I felt like it needed it. So now here I have that ready. So now here I decided to add the arch. So I'll glue this in place. And then after I add the arch, I decided to add the other rack and it just slides right in. So I do a little bit of sanding and add some glue. Well, actually I place it inside and then I add the glue. So get it in place and then I'll adhere it with some glue like this. And I'll put it in its place before the glue gets cool. And now I'm gonna go in with some spackle and it's to cover the top because it looks a little bit, I don't know, it looks like teeth. <laughs> looks a little bit odd. So I just take the spackle and I'll press it in all the, all the little nooks and crannies and get it nice and looking cute. Like a structure, like this, look at that. And I'll allow that to dry and now I'm gonna go in with some of the Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle and give it a full coat. And now I'll go in with some of the Waverly chalk paint in the color hazelnut and do a dry brush. And these little pieces of wood, they're actually from the sides of those crates that I like to take apart all the time. So I'm going to utilize those pieces of wood and they're going to become my oven peels. Yes, where the cookies get cooked or baked. So I'm just gonna do a dry brush on everything nice dry brush give it dimension and now going with a little bit of the puffy paint the 3d paint and i do a little bit of icing work on the oven both sides and here are my little silicone gingerbread men and i'm going to use some e6000 because hot glue doesn't really work well with silicone anything and here i'm just going to adhere them to my little oven peels see they already have the handle <laughs> so I'll just add two on each and I'll set the bottle on top to keep it in place now this is nice and dry the little oven is nice and dry so I picked up this little gnome set it's like a clay set from the Dollar Tree they're ornaments and I removed the little hanger part which is kind of like a little hook that just screws in so I just screwed it off add some hot glue and add my little gnome because my little gnome is gonna be baking gingerbread cookies. Yes. So here I'm gonna add my little peels into my little ovens. Look at that, look how cute. So now I'm gonna take this little candy cane. It's also an ornament and I remove the little hanger part as well, just screw it off. And I'll adhere this little candy cane to the other side of my oven just to embellish it a little bit. I'm trying to find the right spot because I don't want it to interfere with the the peels being stuck in the oven because they'll burn <laughs> so here I place it right here right on the side look how adorable and I just add a little bit more glue to reinforce it 
and look how cute they just pop right out oh my goodness I just can't so now I feel like I still need something so I get one of these plastic peppermints and I add some glue and just place it on the top center and this DIY is complete and here they are cookies in the oven cookies out of the oven and a closer look in the final reveal I'm taking four of these village houses from the Dollar Tree they made out of plastic and I'm going to go in with this rust-oleum paint in the color rust it's a little darker than what I'd like but it's all I could find in the store so I'm gonna go in with some Mod Podge the matte just to give it a nice finish and that way the paint won't chip off or scrape off and now I'm gonna go in with some of this home decor chalk paint by folk art white Adirondack and I'm going to do a dry brush on these houses because I want them to look a little different I know several people have redone these little houses but I wanted mine to be a little bit different so here I'm just gonna do some dry brushing just to give it a full snowy look and I'll do this to all the houses and to all the surfaces so the top the sides all of it until they look like this look how cute they look they look like they've been covered in powdered sugar oh my goodness they look so good so I'm gonna go in with some of my puffy paint and I'm going to just go ahead and do some of the outlines so I'll do the top I'll do all the outlines of the building and the windows and making it look like icing everywhere so this little church is done like this and so now I'm going to add some faux snow to it so I'll place a paper or foam plate underneath and add all my faux snow and I'll do this process to the rest of my little houses until they all look like this and so a closer look at the final reveal I'm taking two of these solar window candles and I'm going to take some of this red ribbon that I had from the Dollar Tree and I'm basically just going to wrap it around the candle itself to kind of create a candy cane look so I'll add a little dab of glue and I'll place the, the ribbon on and then I'll just start rolling it or wrapping it around the candle kind of like a diagonal going downward and I'll go around and round and run it to get to the bottom and then I'll secure it with some more hot glue snip off the excess and I really like this ribbon this ribbon has sequins on it so I'll do that and get it secured in place and I'll do this to both of my candles until they look like this look how cute so now I'm gonna take some of these ornament hooks and I got these at Walmart I like them because they were pretty ornate and I'm going to take some hot glue and simply add the glue to the side of the candle in between the two ribbons and I'm just going to place this little hanger on here and so I'll, I'll just stick it on there until it solidifies and dries and then I'll do the opposite end the same way this one I went a little high but press it down and it just works just fine so here they are nice and pretty and I do this to both of my candles add an extra glue just to reinforce it because it's just a little hanger and so they look like this so here I'm reinforcing the second one as well okay so now I'm going to take these tumbling tower blocks they come in the brown these were from a couple years ago they used to come in couple different colors so this one's already brown and all I'm going to do is add some hot glue to the top of these ornament hooks and I'll place my tumbling tar blocks on top so here's one so I'm essentially making like a sh like a shelf like a shelf maybe now these are a little bit high but I push them down and then they work just fine now, this one's a little high but I do press them down add some more glue just to get it in place and it works a little bit better and then the second one it comes out right from the beginning so that's pretty good <laughs> I didn't have to push it down so I just add some glue this one I added the glue to the tumbling tower blocks and I just place it on top of my ornament hook 
and then I do the same thing to the second tumbling tar block for this candle and I'll place it on top this one yeah this one came out much better look how cute so now I'm going to take some of these wooden gingerbread men that I still had on hand from another project and I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the bottoms to their feet and I'm going to place one on each of these little shelves. I think shelves is not the right word, but I can't think what it is. <laughs> these, these platforms, how's that? I'll place one on each of these little platforms. But look how cute. Oh my goodness. So adorable. Kind of reminds me of, of uh, the street, the city street dec decorations, the Christmas decorations. They're kind of like this. Yeah, look at that. So here I made a couple of small bows to place on my little girls' heads. I love to add little bows to my gingerbread girls. But I end up changing it because I feel like the bow is a little bit too overpowering. Because I'm also adding a bow to the center of the candle where all the hot glue is at. Kind of conceal all the hot glue. So yeah, I felt like that was too much. So now I, I changed it to some baker's twine. And here's how they look and a closer look at the final reveal. I'm taking this picture frame that I was going to use for another project and I'm just going to go in with this Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson and now I'm going to do a dry brushing with this white Adirondack chalk paint by Folk Art and I'll just do a light dry brushing on the whole frame just to give it a little bit of depth, a little bit of character and once I get it done, then I'll go in with some Mod Podge just to seal everything up. I don't want anything scratching off. And I just use the matte Mod Podge. So here I'm doing the inside as well. Just a little light, light, light brushing until it looks like this. It's gonna look cute. And here's the Mod Podge. And with my Cricut, I created this vinyl that says gingerbread wishes and peppermint kisses. And I'll link everything in my description box if you guys wanna to get to it. But look how cute, and so I'm just going to place it on my frame and I'll peel off my contact paper. Now I'm gonna go in with one of these little wooden gingerbread men and I'll just stick it right above where it says gingerbread wishes and add one of these plastic peppermints and place it where it says peppermint kisses. Now all I have left to do is create a quick bow and I just do a quick bow with kind of rather long tails and I do dovetail the ends and then all I have to do is adhere my bow onto, to the top of my little frame and since the tails were a little bit long then I do secure them to the sides of the frame just so they won't be covering up all my wording. So like this. And so now once I get that adhered, I have to move it up a little bit. It was a little bit too low. And now this DIY is complete and a closer look at the final reveal. I picked up this cutting board at my local thrift store. And so I'm just going to remove all the labels that are on it and do a little bit of sanding as well. And now I'm going to go in with some of the apple barrel paint in the color bright red. And I'm going to do a full coverage. Even though I'm not going to use the front side, I'm just going to use the back side. I'll probably use the front side for Valentine's. So yeah, you might see it again later. So again, I created a vinyl with my Cricut. And again, I'll link this in my description box for you guys. And this one just says gingerbread spice and everything nice is what Christmas is made of. I love that one. So here I'm just going to add it to my cutting board. Look at that. So cute. Center it as best I can and press it all down. I get to use my little scraper tool that I found at the Dollar Tree. I'm so happy to find it and remove my contact paper. Now I'm just going to go in with some baker's twine. I'm going to keep it simple, wrap it a few times and just make a double knot and a bow for this one like this but I still want to do a little bit of embellishing 
So I take two more of those wooden gingerbread men, a little gingerbread boy and a gingerbread girl, and I'll just adhere it to the front of the cutting board. And now all I have to do is give the little girl a little bow for her head. So I'm just gonna go in with some more of this Baker's twine. It's a nice thin twine and it's really cute. So I just make a quick little finger bow and adhere it to the top of the head. And look how adorable. Now this DIY is complete and a closer look at the final reveal. So I am taking one of these wooden plaques and the other piece to that wooden frame that I used for DIY number one. And I'm going to go in with some of the apple barrel paint in the color Snow White and give it a full coat. I'm going to take some of these napkins that I found at Walmart and it's got the full gingerbread cookie recipe on it. Oh my goodness. So I removed the backing of the tissue paper of the napkin and I cut out the recipe. The recipe was a little bit too long for this piece of wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place part of it on the back. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some of these little gingerbread people, one of the little boys and one of the little girls, and my fan is on and that's why it's like blowing everywhere. <laughs> Just making it more challenging for myself, I guess. <laughs> so, and I'm taking a candy cane as well. And here I'm just cutting it all out, try to trim as best I can. But since I painted it white and then the backing paper is white as well, it's fine. So I'm going to go in with some of the Mod Podge, the matte Mod Podge. And now I'll just begin to add all my Mod Podge and adhere all these pieces, beginning with the top where it says gingerbread cookies. And so I'll make sure to do a light coat, but do a thorough coat. I want to make sure that it's nice and covered with Mod Podge. And here's the actual cookie recipe. So I'll add that underneath the title, center as best I can, kind of rub it and press it down gently. Don't rip the tissue paper, the napkin paper, and then add some more of the Mod Podge everywhere. Get all the edges nice and secure. And then I'm gonna take the candy cane and place it on the bottom right-hand corner right here. And then once I allow this to dry, I'll flip it over and I'll put it on a piece of parchment paper just to make sure it doesn't get stuck to anything. And now for this back side, I'm going to first place the icing recipe, which is the other part of the recipe that would not fit on the front. It's just the recipe to the icing and instructions how to embellish the cookies. So I'll place this down here at the bottom, make sure it's going to have a, its spot. And then on the top portion of this side, I'll add my gingerbread people. So I'll put my little girl on the left and put my little boy on the right. And here I'm just adding some more Mod Podge and get all the edges. And that is it. Once I get all this completed, then I'll just adhere the stand that came off of that wooden frame and I'll place it on the bottom of this frame so this whole piece will stand up on its own, freestanding. And then I'll add a, a few bows here and there and that is it. This DIY will be complete and it is done. Look how cute. And here is the front and here is the back and a closer look at the final reveal.
going to take two of these sets of measuring cups and spoons from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to remove the ring and remove all the spoons off of the cup sets on both sets like this and I'll set the spoons aside. I end up using one of the spoons for each of these projects for this time around and for now I'm going to take my EMT shears and I'm just going to snip off all these handles. And I'll show you real quick that they cut off really easily with these shears. And I'll link them in my description box if you're interested. So I'll just continue to snip off all these handles and we'll save the handles for another DIY. I'm sure we can figure something out. But look how easily these cut off. And so I'll do this to both of these sets like this. Now once they're cut off, now I'm going to start assembling them in a pyramid form. So I'm going to take some really hot glue and put it around the inside perimeter edge and place it on top of the bigger cup. And I'll do this same process to the rest of my cups until I have a pyramid shape or a tree shape. This will be an unusual tree for sure. So here's my last one and I used all my little cups from one cup to a quarter cup and now I'm going to take the larger spoon which I'm thinking is the tablespoon snipping off the handle and trimming it and adding that to the top the very top of my little setup place it right in the center and look and I do this to both sets like this now they're ready to spray paint, so I'm going to take my Rust-Oleum, spray paint in the color brown, and paint them outside. And now I'll give them a coat of Mod Podge, like I do all my spray paint projects. And now here I'm taking two of these wood ornaments from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to fill in the little holes with some spackle. And then I wipe off the excess with a wet baby wipe. And now I'm going to go in with the Apple Barrel paint in the color Nutmeg Brown, give them a full paint. And I'm going to take this really cute peppermint stripe, candy cane stripe ribbon, and I'm going to go around the perimeter, outside perimeter of this wood round in this manner, going all the way around. And I'll do this to both of these rounds. And then I don't show it, but I ended up also going in with some Rick Rack later on. I felt like it just needed a little something, something. So for now, for now, it just has this ribbon, but I do end up going in with the Rick Rack, and you'll see that in the final reveal. You won't see it yet. So I just get this done like this, and I do them both. Reminding me of an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> so now I'm going to take these two glass candle holders. One is from Dollar Tree, and the other one is a thrifted one. And I'm just going to go in with some E6000 and place it around the top edge of the candle holders and now I'll place these candle holders on my wood rounds so I'll put my wood round down and I'll put my glass candle holder center it on top like this and now I'll just I don't use any hot glue or anything now I'll just turn them over and set them aside and allow them to dry on their own look how cute they're just going to be like little pedestals for my two of my unusual trees. So here they are. Here are my trees nice and dry. All the Mod Podge is dry. And now I'm going to go in with the Rick Rack. And I'm going to use the Rick Rack to kind of conceal the areas where I had glued them together. All these little cups. And it also gives them a cute little finished edge. Almost similar to what icing would look like. But without all that paint this time around, I'll just go around with this with this Rick Rack. And so I'll just keep going around the whole thing, adding little bits of glue at a time. Just taking my time with it, get it good and precise until I get it to the very end. And look how cute. Almost looks like chocolate. And here they are. Look how adorable. Oh my goodness, I just can't. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with all these various ribbons. Not really sure which ribbons I'm going to use where. 
but I ended up going through with all these ribbons like this. I decided to go with, and now I'm going to use these little embellishments and some of these little berries from the Dollar Tree. And so these little gingerbread men are from Amazon. They're just little tiny gingerbread men made out of silicone. And you'll see that I adhere them with hot glue. Yeah, don't do that. They fall right off because these are silicone. And as we know, silicone and glue, they don't work really well. So go in with E6000 or crazy glue, super glue. But yeah, in, in here, you'll see that I went in with the hot glue just for the convenience of getting done. But yeah, the next morning they were off. <laughs> they just fell right off. So definitely go in with E6000 with these little silicones. Now these other peppermints, you can use you can use hot glue, no problem. They'll stay on there just fine. And so I just add these just wherever I think it needs a little cuteness. And I'll put the little berries up on the very top because they're nice and frosted and super cute. Look how adorable, oh my goodness. Now I'll work on the second tree. It won't, st it won't sit still, so I have to add a scissor, pair of scissors at the bottom. And here I go with my little gingerbread men again. And like I said, E6000. Don't do the hot glue. And here are my peppermints. I usually don't show all this much detail on when, how I do my projects. I just, they just take too long, but I figure well, I'll show it this time. And my little berries, my frosted berries. That's so cute. And I topped them with a couple little wooden red stars. And here, here they are for now. A closer look at the final reveal. I went through the same process as making these trees as the first DIY, except for I added another spoon on top. And so here I'm going to go in with some of this red and white baker's twine. And I'm just going to add a little bit of glue and just start wrapping this twine wherever each of the sections meet. So these, this right here is where the two spoons met. And I'll just keep continue to wrap this around until I'm satisfied with the look. And when I'm done with that section, I'll add a little bit of glue just to keep it in place and continue with the next section. And don't worry about that extra string that you see on the back. That Well, this will be at the back and it'll be concealed with something else. So just for now, look, I'm just going to continue to wrap this around in this manner until it looks like this. And of course, I'll secure the very end with some more hot glue. And look at this, this is looking so cute. And I do this to both like this. So now I'm going to go in with these pom-pom trims. Oh my goodness, these are so adorable. And all I'm going to do is right below all my baker's twine, I'm going to add a row of pom-poms alternating with red and white. So I'll begin with the, the red up top. Well, here I'm doing the white, but I end up doing the red up top. And I begin wherever the thread is on the back. It helps conceal it a little bit better and I'll just go around little little areas at a time because this glue dries quickly on this plastic so I'll just add the trim like this keep going around take my time I don't stretch it I just let it flow naturally until look at this so cute and I'll top them with these little wooden stars these are from the Dollar Tree and I just painted them red and look how adorable oh my goodness these little trees are so unusual so cute look at this adorable so now i'm going to take these plastic candy canes and i'm just going to add a little bit of embellishment right behind the stars and i'll i'll add two kind of joining them together like this and i'll just add a little bit of glue and put them behind the star and look, it just gives it that perfect little look. Look how adorable. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to use these. And now I want to give them a little base to sit on. So I picked up these little these little pots from the Dollar Tree. They're like little dishes in the kitchen section. And I'm taking some of this floral foam, cutting it down so it'll fit inside my little dish. Cutting that in half because I don't need a real thick piece. And I'm just going to adhere it into the little crocs like this and so I'll add them both 
and let them allow them to dry cool down and now I'm going to go in with these straws and these wooden dowels because I felt like the straws weren't strong enough so I placed some wooden dowels inside of the straws hot glue them in place snipped off the excess straws or excess wooden dowel in this manner that way I have two pieces of wooden dowels that are decorated really cute but they're strong so yeah there's wooden dowels inside so now here all I'm going to do is add a bunch of glue good Gorilla Glue put these in place and put them inside my little pots in the floor foam add some hot glue place it in there and they stay on there perfectly and I do this to both like this this one I went ahead and put the glue first then I pushed it down and now I'm taking some polyfill and I'm just gonna glue this inside the pot just to give it that snow look and here they are in a closer look at the final reveal I'm taking this foam cone from the Dollar Tree and I'm taking this piece of fabric that's 9 by 9 inches and I'm going to cover this cone with this fabric so I'm going to place it on the very front in the manner that I want the fabric to lay and I'm going to place it to where the bottom of the fabric almost is perfect on the bottom and I'll secure it with some glue and I'll then I'll flip it over and add some more glue to the other end put that down and once I have the bottom nice and secure then I'll figure out how much I'm gonna to need to cut and so I decide to cut this end first and here I'm just gonna cut in a straight line up that way it's a little bit easier to adhere to the cone and it won't be so bulky so I'll just add a bit of glue and press it down as tight as I can and now I'll put pull the other section or the other side nice and taut and add some glue and stretch it and press it down till it's nice and adhered and then here I'll pull this section and cut this piece off in a straight line again so it won't be so bulky and now I'll just add some glue another bead of glue and press this piece of fabric down until it makes a perfect cone and now the very bottom I'll trim off the extra the extra edges on it and the top I'll also snip off the excess I don't need it and I take some hot glue and just press everything down nice and tight so I just take my time press it down almost like a gift push down the sides the other side as well and of course last but not least the very top piece and since everything's nice and trimmed it won't be bulky up top like this how cute so far so good the bottom is not done though the bottom is still wide open so I take another piece of fabric just a nice little square add a bunch of glue to the very the very bottom of my cone and place my piece of fabric and once it's dry then I take my scissors and just snip off the excess trim it off to a perfect circle like this and now it's finished so now I'm going to go in with this really cute burlap and lace trim that a sweet friend of mine Dina sent me I've been waiting to use this for one of these trees look how adorable it's a beautiful beautiful trim and it goes perfectly with this fabric this gingham fabric I think gingham and burlap is so cute and then the lace oh, that just takes over the top for me look how adorable so once I have one end to secure in place then I'll add some hot glue on the bottom and go at a section at a time and secure it all in place until it meets back to the very back like this look how adorable make sure to snip off anything excess so everything's nice and finished looking I think it's looking super cute and then I'll set it aside and we'll come back to it a little bit later so DIY number four I'm doing the same thing with another piece of fabric and another foam cone and now I'm taking an excess piece of fabric and with my glue gun I'm just going to add a little dab of glue and fold down this piece of fabric in different spots to create little pleats and I did this very similar style to my little gingerbread girl from another project and I'll 
link that up in the cards if you're interested to see how I made that. But I made her a little skirt with this. And look, again, I made kind of a little skirt. And so now I'm going to just hot glue the skirt onto my cone, my tree. And so I'll begin with one side, hold it down, add another bead of glue, place that on there, press it down, massage it in, and then continue with the other section. Same thing until I get to the very last section, add another bead of glue, and press it down like this. Almost looking like a dress. This little this little uh, Christmas tree could almost look like a, a dress, a little girl, I don't know, <laughs> a Barbie doll. <laughs> so here I'm just going to hot glue the back together in this manner and keep adding glue until it's all nice and adhered. One more little dab of glue. Make sure it's all nice and tight. I don't want any peekaboos. And here it is. Look how cute. Almost stands on its own. Oh my goodness. So now I'm going to go in with some Rick Rack just to finish off the edge where the ruffle meets the cone in this manner. And I'll do in the same manner I've been adding this Rick Rack and lace and everything else, ribbons. And I'll just do a section at a time little dabs of glue or beads of glue with this very precise Sherbonder glue gun. I love this kind of application for this type of project. And look at that, it's so beautiful. I wanted to add something in the center but I changed my mind and I decided to add something on the very top. So I do another bit of brick rack and I'll add it in the same manner. A little dab of glue or bead of glue and then go around until it's all completely covered on the top as well like this now I'm descending the middle still needs something so back on the bottom and the back I'll add another dab of glue add my rickrack and this time I'm doing a more vertical kind of rotation with this rickrack more of a candy cane kind of a stripe I kind of go with the fabric but then I kind of don't just because the fabrics look a little different on each side of the cone but I just go around pulling it taut and when I get to the very back that's where I'll add my glue where the seam is on the back and I'll just continue this in this manner until I get to the very top so see every time there's a little seam there that's when I'll add my glue and then I'll go to the very top sniff off, snip off the excess and add my last little dab of glue and adhere it like this look how cute very unusual for sure so now i'm going to add some more rickrack i'm going to add it to the bottom edge just to give it that complete look and i'll do the same thing just take my time add a little bit of glue and adhere it and then go around until it's all completed now it's really looking like a little dress. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's adorable. <laughs> oh my goodness. So now I'm going to take these little pieces of bamboo skewers. I'm going to add a little dab of glue. And I picked up these little candy cane stripe beads from Amazon. I'll link them in my description box. They're just wooden beads. And I'll adhere them to this. these little pieces of bamboo skewers. And I'll set them together to create kind of a star shape, but without five points, I just do four. Add another dab of glue, put it in place, and I'll do this to both. Keep, I'll keep making sure that, that they're going to fit perfectly because I want them to kind of intertwine together. And now that I'm pretty much happy with it, I'll go ahead and adhere the other ends. That way then I'll slide around and now I'll snip off the excess bamboo skewers which are super easy to cut off. Now I'll place my little pieces together like this and I'll adhere them with the hot glue and I'll adhere, I'll adhere them on the front and on the back of these and we won't see all that glue because we will cover them up. So once I get them nice and adhered, and now I'll go in with this really cute thin red satin ribbon, 
and I'll just kind of wind it around to conceal the bamboo skewer and I'll just keep wrapping it and wrapping it until I use the whole little piece of ribbon and it covers up all the bamboo skewer so I'll just use hot glue and at the very end I'll snip off the excess and now I'll just place it on top of my little tree with a little bit of glue and that is it look how cute I don't show it but at the very end I do end up adding a couple bows to this tree but for the most part that is it and I'll set it on top of a riser that I already had made and now I'll go back to my gingham tree and I tried to put it on the smaller riser that I already had made but I wasn't really liking the way it looked so instead I decided to go in with these wooden stems from the Dollar Tree. First I wanted to use these two thinner ones, but they weren't they wouldn't line up just right, so I'm going to use the thicker ones. And they did a little bit better, and I kind of like the way the bottom one kind of curves down. So I just hot glued them together, and then I took some more hot glue and hot glued this to the bottom of my foam tree. I wasn't liking the break in the two pieces of wood stem so I'm going to go in with some more of the baker's twine and just wrap around it quite a few times just to help conceal it and give it a decorative look and I apologize for getting out of frame here so I'll add a little bit of dab of glue and secure it in place and I like the way this looks much better so now I'm taking this little star and I'm kind of leaving it natural to go with the burlap trim and the wood stems and I'm just going to go in with some more of the baker's twine and I'm just going to go around the whole perimeter and I do the sides, both sides, the front and the back. And all I'm going to do now is just adhere it to the top of my little tree and I added a few little bows as well. And here's how they look. And now ready for the final reveal. To begin with this fruit soda bottle from the Dollar Tree and I chose this particular bottle for two reasons the taste is pretty good and the bottle is perfect for what I need so I'm going to begin by taking my EMT shears and I'm going to cut off the bottom portion of this bottle I don't need it and I'm taking a clean paper towel and wiping off all the water that I had rinsed the bottle with and I'm taking some more scissors and I'm just going to trim this down a little bit more wanted a little bit shorter and of course I want it to sit flat so I need it to be even on the bottom so just a little trim trim and that should work perfectly so I just need to sit flat like this and now I need to get rid of this top part of this bottle I think it's called the neck and I couldn't find my hot knife so I'm just going to use my little mini iron and I'm just going to basically poke it in in all four sections until it looks like this and I'm taking my 
needle nose pliers and I'm just going to finish it off and remove that top part like this. So once that's off, I'm going back in with my EMT shears and I'm removing any excess plastic that's sticking up. And I'm, then I'm taking my little iron again to flatten everything down, making it smooth. So then I go ahead and do this to four different bottles. Yes, four of them. <laughs> now I'm going to take some of these glass stones from the Dollar Tree and some E6000 and I'm going to adhere these stones onto the tops of these uh, these bottles. I almost said water bottles. <laughs> of these bottles like this. I do that to all four. Now I'm taking some of these crystal knobs. These are from Amazon and I'm going to add some E6000 and place those on top of the glass stones. And this was about to fall. <laughs> so I needed to hold it down for a little bit before I could let go. But here they are all done. And these will be the tops to my pedestal stands. Speaking of which, I'm going to use these metal bottle caps from the Dollar Tree, remove the jute twine in, on them. And I'm going to use these wood candle sticks, candle holders. And I'm going to adhere the candle holders to the bottoms of these bottle caps and go in with these four colors of paint until they look like this. Now they're all dry, ready, and now I have four pedestal stands with high cloche domes for my projects. It's going to be so cute. I'm going to start with four of these Dollar Tree wooden birdhouses, and I'm just going to take my needle nose pliers, remove all these little perch posts on them, off of them. And I'm going to use my finger sander to sand off any rough edges, get everything nice and smooth. And I'm going to go in with these four colors again, the ballet slipper, the maze, the lagoon, and the lavender from Waverly, and also the nutmeg brown, and paint these all in this manner. And now I'm going to go in with the tulip slick puffy paint, which is a 3D paint and get these little houses all nice and iced up like this. Now while the icing is wet, of course, I'm going to add some glitter. Of course, faux icing. <laughs> I'm going to add some glitter, get it all nice and pretty. And now I'm going to work on the roofs. All the roofs will look a little bit different. So this one, I'm just going to do like a scallop effect and add the glitter like this and then for the next one this one here i'll just add another little bank of faux snow and add the glitter like this and then this last one i'll do just some stripes and add the glitter the first one i'll leave as is like i had it i think that's unique enough but I do add the glitter on these just to make them look extra special. Now I'm going to take a variety of beads, actually the elongated beads that I have. These actually were from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to take a few of each color. I do pick a, a few green, but I'd end up not using the green. I end up just using the pink, yellow, blue, and purple. And I'm going to use these bamboo skewers. And I'm just going to place these on the bamboo skewers in a set of three three different colors and I'll do two sets of three different colors until they look like this so now I'm going to add a little dab of glue and place all these beads down that way they're nice and anchored and I'll do this to all of them and once I get that done then I'll snip off the excess bamboo skewer so what I'm doing is I'm making little sets of beads that way they don't fall apart and that way they're ready for me for embellishing my projects. So now I'm just going to sand off any excess bamboo skewer. And I'm taking this thin washi tape that I had in my stash. And I'm just going to create kind of a peppermint stripe type of look. And snip off the excess. And I'll do this to all but two of them. So here they're all done. I'm just going to set these aside for now. Now here are my little houses. All nice and dry. They need little doors, and I couldn't find any doors small enough, but I found these little tags in my stash. They're made out of wood, and I'm just going to cut them down with my miter shears and my EMT shears, and then I'll just kind of contour the edges, 
make them a little rounded make them look a little bit like a door and I'll do this to all four for all four of my houses in this manner making one door a little bit smaller for the house that doesn't have a hole on the bottom so like this now I'm gonna go in with these paints again and get them painted and now here are all my embellishments and here's how they look I'm going to take these empty ribbon spools and I'm going to take my finger utility knife and create a hole on the bottom then I'm taking a couple of these long uh, wooden dowels from Walmart and I'm going to cut them in half doesn't matter how long they are they could be different lengths and now here they are they're looking like little lollipops now I'm going to go in with this white paint get them all painted and then I'm taking these rounds of scrapbooking paper that I had and some Mod Podge and adhering them onto them and now I'm going to go in with some of these pieces of rickrack that I had in my stash and I'm just going to use the, co the coordinating color with the color of the scrapbooking paper and just fill it in on the inside just to make it look like something cute and I just go around a couple times just to fill in the you know the majority of it and then the rest I'll just wrap it around the wooden dowel and then I'll take a little dab of glue and secure that on the end like this and then I'll go ahead and do this same thing to all four to the, the rest of them set that aside and now I'm going to take some plastic wrap just a regular old plastic wrap from the Dollar Tree I'm just taking a small piece enough to wrap my lollipop and I'm taking my heat gun and I'm just going to just shrink wrap this onto my little lollipop look at that works perfectly I figured this out last Christmas when I made some gift baskets for my daughters it works so now I'm just taking a little bow and placing a little bow on each of them look how adorable now they need something to sit on so I'm taking four of these wooden blocks these dice these are the wooden dice from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take this spade blade and just make some holes or spade drill and make some holes and I don't go very deep just enough for the for the wood dowel to go in then I go ahead and do that to all four and now I'll go in with the apple barrel paint and color them brown and go in with the slick paint as well the puffy paint to give them that icing look I'll add a dab of glue inside and place my lollipops inside each one and once those are complete then I'll take some more puffy paint and go in on the inside to fill in that hole and I do embellish with some faux candy and this is how they look neutral gingerbread yeah and I went ahead and painted everything front and back with the Waverly chalk paint and the color hazelnut for this DIY I usually do nutmeg brown but for this one I decided to use the hazelnut just because it's a more neutral tone so now I'm taking one of these markers these white markers paint markers and I'm going to kind of draw out what I think I want my houses to look like because it's it's a very different style of gingerbread pieces so here I did speed it up so no I don't draw this fast believe me this took me a while <laughs> this took me a while to figure out what I wanted to draw because I am not an artiste 
my mother was and my children most of them are but it skipped me so it's <laughs> it's a big effort for me but if i can do it guys you can do it too yes you can so here i'm just drawing what i think i want and i did this to all the houses and i went over all of them with the puffy paint till i got them all to look like this so now I feel like it needed a little bit of glistening, so I'm taking some of this Tulip Glitter paint. It's a fabric paint by Tulip. And I'm just going to take my little brush, and I'm just going to brush a really light coat on these houses. So I just felt like it needed something. So just a light coat. And here they all are, nice and dry. Do they just glisten just right? So now here I picked up these trees ornaments from the Dollar Tree. They are made out of a cardboard, of a corrugated cardboard type of material. And I'm going to use my heat gun to soften up the glue to remove the embellishments. I'm not going to use any embellishments on this tree. Now the thing is, since they are made out of a corrugated cardboard, the cardboard did come up a little bit, but I did glue it down with some hot glue and it worked just fine. So here I'm just adding a little hot glue and pressing it down. And look at that, you can't even tell. Now it is, it is coated with some glitter, but the glitter does not come off easily. And it's a nice, it looks like a nice quality glitter to me. It's kind of like a chunkier pieces. But look, they are so cute. So now I'm going to go in with the tulip paint in the white, the white slick. And I'm just going to go over the outline and do some more embellishing on these trees as well. So they look like this. So cute. Now here I am taking another piece of wood and I went ahead and painted it in the same colors, the same way. And now I'm ready to assemble everything. And I'm also using some tumbling tower blocks as well. So now here I'm taking some of that wood glue, that super glue wood glue, adding it to the bottom of one of my houses and adding a couple dabs of hot glue on the ends because I want both long lasting and instant holds. So here I'm just trying to see where I want them both, but of course I'm only going to do one at a time. So now I'm going to take a tumbling tower block and adding a couple of dabs of glue to help adhere this to the back to give the back of the house support like this. Now here's the second house is going to go right beside the first house. Just a dab of glue here and there, wood glue, hot glue, and place it right beside it. I wanted the two houses with the frosted roof line to go on the back that's my thinking anyway <laughs> and here's another tumbling tower block um, and i'll add it to the back of the second house to help secure that one in place as you can see back here you can see a little bit better now and now i'm going to take my third house this one's a little bit shorter i did cut this one down i didn't show it but i did cut it down a few inches to be a little bit shorter and I'll place this in front in this manner. And of course, I'll do a tumbling tar block on the back as well. Now I'm going to turn it all the way around so you can see the back. And I'm just going to add a couple dabs here and there. And place it on the back of the third house like this. Make sure everything's nice and secure. The other two houses, I didn't show all the steps because I've already been showing them. So they look like this. Look how adorable. So now I'm going to add two of these trees. I have three, but I only use two. So here I'm just going to add, again, I'm out of frame. And I'm, I apologize. I'm just adding glue to the bottom of the tree and I'm placing it where I want it. And then I'm going to adhere the top part of the tree as well, like this. And I do the same thing to the other side. And then that is it for this one. I'm not going to use that third tree. It doesn't need any bows. This is going to be it. Super cute and simple and neutral. Beautiful. Here's how it looks. balsa wood that I picked up from Amazon in a pack I'll have everything linked in my description box and I went on the internet found 
a, an outline of a gingerbread man. So all I did was import the picture into the program. I happen to use Lightburn, which is a paid program, but I have the free trial period. And Ortur does have their own program. So that's an option there. Okay, so look, here's my little gingerbread man and he is cut out. I did create quite a few engraved ones and cut ones. And I did also engrave baking memories on it. Now I'm gonna start with my DIY. I'm just taking three scrap pieces of wood and I'm taking the piece that has the baking memories on it and I'm going to snip off with my utility knife the excess balsa wood that's on my project. I'm just going to score it and then snip it off or pop it off and then using my EMT shears to remove the rest. Now I have to do the side. It's just a little bit longer on the side as well. It's a little bit wider. So I do the same thing with my utility knife and my EMT shears. These shears are fantastic. They can cut this kind of wood, no problem. So now I'm ready to create my project. I'm taking my finger sander and getting everything nice and sanded. And I'm gonna go in with my super glue wood glue and add some glue to my wood piece and adhere it to the scrap piece of wood. And then I'm going to use my craft clips to clip it all together so it's nice and still and it won't move while it's drying and curing. And I'll set it aside so it'll dry. Now once it's all dried, which only took like a couple hours, this really this glue is really good. Now I'm just removing all the craft clips and I'll paint the natural part with the nutmeg brown and we'll come back to that. In the meantime, I'm taking two more pieces of my scrap wood and one of my gingerbread cutouts and I'm painting them in these colors, the white, the crimson, and the nutmeg brown. And I'm going to stack them onto each other in this manner and work on my little gingerbread man. I painted this one with some of the slick paint by Tulip, but this is not the one I ended up using on this DIY. I used a different one. But on the left, it looks like a, a stack of books, which you could also definitely do a stack of books. This is actually going to be a piece of cake or a small cake. <laughs> a, a small wooden cake <laughs> with frosting. Okay, so now I'm going to adhere all these pieces of wood stack them up in this manner so as you can see it does look like a stack of books but no not what I'm doing here <laughs> okay so here's the little gingerbread man that I'm going to use and I'm going to take some more of this slick paint and I'm just going to full frost this whole piece in this manner and I'll just place the gingerbread man on top of the cake as if he jumped off and is about to run because you know he's the gingerbread man. <laughs> Here's how it looks.
DIY, we're going to use five of these wooden gingerbread men and two of these wooden gingerbread houses. And we're going to go in with some of the apple barrel paint and the color nutmeg and give them a good paint, except for leave the accent pieces natural for now. So now we're going to begin with the houses and we're just going to go in with some white chalk paint and do all the accents the roof lines and the window frames and I'll also paint the bottom to give it a snowbank kind of look but I'll leave a section open for the door and now I'm going to go in with some of these wood planks from the Dollar Tree and I'll paint them in the same color and now I'll go in with some of the Elaine's tacky glue which is the glue that I prefer to use for these balsa wood items these crafter square wood plaques and planks but I do add a little bit of hot glue just to get it to stay immediately so here again I'll just add some of the Elaine's tacky glue place my plank on the plaque and add a couple little dabs of hot glue here and there so we are constructing a gingerbread house and it's going to be super cute so here in the inside I'm just reinforcing with some beads of glue hot glue and you won't see it anyway because it's in, it'll be on the inside. So here I'm taking another one of these wood planks and I'm going to measure and see how much I'm going to need to create my side of the house. And here I'm just going to mark off, kind of notch off the two sides with my miter shears. Now you could very easily use a craft knife or exacto knife, utility knife, any kind of sharp implement. You can score it. These balsa wood planks are very easy to cut. So you're just going to go ahead and cut it until it snips off like a cracker. And trim off any excess or even sand it off if you need to. And again, we'll just go ahead and go in with the Elaine's Tacky Glue. Put a bead down, set it on there, and reinforce it with a little bit of hot glue. And we'll do that to, to both sides until it looks like this. And now we're ready to add the back part of the house onto here. It'll fit there just perfectly. And we'll do the same thing. We'll grab some of the Elaine's Tacky Glue and we'll run beads down all the sides. And place the back of the house on top like this. And then set it on the table to make sure it's nice and level. And press it and then put it aside to allow it to dry. But look how cute! So here it is, nice and dry, ready to go. Now we're ready to do some embellishing. So we're gonna begin with some of the caulking, and this is from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna go in and fill in all the cracks. And it's ironic because isn't that what caulking is for? <laughs> to fill in the cracks. So I'm just gonna go in and fill all these cracks in, make sure it's nice and thick. I want it to look luxurious, like it's really decadent and frosted that look until it looks like this and I get all the windows done as well and the snow banks everywhere that there's white everywhere where I painted white is, is receiving this caulking so now here I remove this door off of this extra wood uh, plaque that I had and I did break it a little bit but it's not hardly noticeable so it'll be all right but look how cute the house is looking it's looking so cute so here's my spot for the door and here is where I broke the door but like I mentioned it's hardly noticeable so we're just going to go for it and I'm just going to add a couple beads of glue and put my door in place look how cute it's so cute so now I'm going to go in with the chalk paint and paint everything white because again you know that this caulking it doesn't dry bright white it dries like a dull white and I wanted everything to be nice and bright white and while the paint is drying I'm going to go ahead and add some of that really pretty glitter the pretty iridescent -y, sugar looking glitter just that really fine stuff the really pretty one so here I'm going to just finish it up and look how cute it's really really cute Every gingerbread needs some sugar. <laughs> and I also add it to all the window frames. And everywhere that there's some paint, it's going to receive some glitter. And I'll just continue this process 
and I'll also paint the little wreath on the door green and red until it looks like this. Look how cute! And I'm just taking a yellow marker and I'm going to color in inside of, of the windows because I wanted to make it look like somebody's home and the lights are on. Just a nice glowy kind of warm look inside the windows. And I just achieve this with a marker, a nail marker. And now I'm taking some of these glitter glue sticks from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take a few and cut them in little pieces and I'm going to glue them all together and I'll place them in my glue gun and I'm going to create the lights on the house. And now with my newly created multicolor glue stick, I'm going to go in and add all the lights. And so first I'll do the red, which is the first color, squeeze out the excess and then go to the next color, which was gold and then green and then silver until I get the whole little front of the house done and all the lights are on there. Look how cute they look like lights. And I was just too bad that this glitter glue stick pack didn't have any blue in it. Otherwise, it would have some blue lights. How cute. But I think it's super cute like it is too. It's just really cute. And now I'm going to take this plastic candy cane garland. And all I'm going to do is just snip off a couple of the little candy canes. And glue them to the sides just for a little bit of embellishments. Make it quick. Make it easy. Family friendly. And now all I have to do is place it on a base. And so I'm taking one of these decor pieces. It says Candy Cane Lane. I guess that'll be the name of the house. And I didn't show it, but I did add a little bit of embellishments on the roof. And they're just made out of clay, like little gumdrops. And I'm adding these little trees for more embellishments. And that is it. Super cute. Look at this. A total 3D, 4D dimensional gingerbread house. Look how cute. why I am taking one of these larger hanging palette signs from the Dollar Tree Crafter Square and some of this nutmeg paint from Apple Barrel and I'm trying to use up whatever's left in this bottle this was like the end of the bottle so sad <laughs> and I'm gonna take this and just paint this sign with it I do remove the twine and the staples and I get it a good paint and I do the same thing with one of these wooden pencil boxes and now I'm taking some of these silicone gingerbread men and women. They're from Amazon and I'll link them in my description. They're just made out of silicone and I'm going to remove all the little hanger pieces. I'm not going to need them. And I'm going to place these little gingerbread men on this box on the outside. And again, these little gingerbread men and little girl, they, they're going to represent my grandchildren. So my little granddaughter in the front because she's the oldest and the only girl. And then two boys on each side. And then I'll glue the other two boys on the sides of this palette sign, like this. So now all I'm going to do is take my wooden pencil box and hot glue it to the center, like this. And pretty much, I was thinking I was done, and now I'm just going to add some styrofoam and some florals. But then I decided to do some caulking. So here it is all finished without the caulking. gingerbread houses uh, plaques from the Dollar Tree these wood plaques and I'm removing the windows three windows and a door and the reason why I'm using two plaques is because they're not the same one has two windows and the other one has a window and a door and I wanted three windows and a door so that's why I did that so I'm gonna paint it with this nutmeg acrylic paint from Apple Barrel and I'm gonna paint the windows and the doors white so here I have everything painted oh and I painted the frosting up top white also so here I'm gonna glue the doors the door and the windows back on but first I'm gonna add these glittery green trees from the Dollar Tree they're made out of wood as well and I'm just gonna add those real quick because I want to make sure the windows are gonna fit just right 
if I added the windows, the trees might not fit, so that's why I did that. So now I'm, I'm good to go with the windows, I'll add those. And just be careful with this part because that hot glue is hot. And these little lines are a little tricky. But there I have it. So now I'm taking these two Chanel sticks, one is the glittery red and one is the white. And I'm just going to twist them together and form a peppermint kind of look, if you will. And I'm just going to hot glue them real quick with a couple little dabs of glue. That's just going to be another dimension of texture. So far all I have is wood. So now I'm taking some of these little mesh lights from the Dollar Tree and I add some batteries. And I'm going to hot glue those to the gables or the roof. Just a little bit of glue, not a lot because I don't want to ruin the lights. So just a little bit of glue. And I use these clips that you get from the Dollar Tree's um, laundry section. They're for laundry, but you know what? They're great for crafts too. A little hack. So I use those to help hold everything so I don't have to burn my fingers. And then I just glue the battery pack on. And I'm good to go with that part. So now I'm taking this little bit of this little tiny sprig off this uh, little bundle Christmas decor floral and I'm just going to create a tiny little wreath. I just want a tiny little wreath. So I add a little bit of glue and glue it into each into itself. Sorry that I'm out of frame for here, here for a second but it's just for a second. So I'm just adding a little bit more glue and adding some of the little pieces to make it more full. I don't want it to look bare on one side. So I'm just continuing to add the little sprigs to make it look nice and full. And now I pick up some of this candy cane stripe ribbon from the Dollar Tree as well and I cut it in half down the length, make a quick little bow. This is going to be for the little wreath. And this will just add another dimension of texture to my plaque. Snip off the ends. Add a little bit of glue on the wreath and place it on there. Put a little dab on the window. Put the wreath on there and I'm good. So now I picked up this fabric at Walmart. And I Mod Podged it to a piece of foam board. Actually, no, it's poster board. And also, I picked up some of this cute ribbon from the Dollar Tree with the little graphics on it. And I Mod Podge that on some poster board as well. And so I'm going to use this ribbon. I'm going to be cutting out all the little pieces on it to use it as embellishments for the gingerbread houses. So I just add Mod Podge on top and on the bottom. On the under, underneath and on the top. So I just use these to embellish the houses and you can do it as you'd like. I decided to put them on the sides, make it kind of look like peppermint columns and you'll see later on I use them on the birdhouses as well. But you can place them wherever you'd like. So now I'm pretty much done with this gingerbread plaque for now. Not completely done but for now I'm going to set it aside. Gingerbread men. So I'm taking these cookie cutters from the Dollar Tree and some of this air drying clay also from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to create some gingerbread men or a gingerbread couple, a man and a woman. So I'm just going to work with the clay and if it's a little thick you can add a little bit of water. Just keep it moist and kind of press it down and do like you're making real gingerbread cookies or, or cookie cutter cookies, sugar cookies. And you're going to make two, or you can make more. You can make as many as you'd like. I decided to make two, just for this little scene. But they came out real cute. Just let them dry. Once they dry, they're a little light, but I was fine with the color. I decided not to paint the actual gingerbread men and women. So I'm using some of this caulking from the Dollar Tree and one of these uh, piping kits from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to add the, the gingerbread man and the gingerbread woman some hair give her a little bit more hair than him 
Now, I am not a cake decorator by any means, so <laughs> be kind. <laughs> but here, I'm just going to add some little snow to the plaques, some on the bottom, and some on the top. And I'm trying to be careful not to cover up my lights, because my lights are on there. So I just go above the lights, and I also go below the lights. Try not to get it on the gingerbread house itself. So I just work on it until I'm pretty happy with it. And if you mess up, you can use any kind of like little stick. I'm using a bamboo skewer. And then also later I do wet my finger and use my fingers. But make sure your fingers are wet. If they're not wet, it'll just stick all over your fingers. So those are just a little a couple little hacks there, little tricks. But you know, do as you like. This is gonna be cute. This is gonna add another dimension, another layer of texture. Super cute. So I just keep working on it until I'm happy with it. And now I'm gonna add the little pieces from the ribbon that I Mod Podge onto a uh, poster board. I cut them out with my scissors. And now I'm cutting some of these little pieces of the of the bamboo skewer and I'm going to create little lollipops on the front so I'm just gonna hot glue the little tiny pieces of bamboo skewer and some of the little peppermint candies from the ribbon that I cut out or should I say ribbon cutouts so I just keep working on it just trying to make it look cute. And you can embellish these any way you'd like. I tried to make this as much Dollar Tree as possible. The only thing I used that wasn't Dollar Tree was the stripe fabric. But the ribbons Dollar Tree, the the chenille sticks are Dollar Tree, the everything else is Dollar Tree. So and I'm just working on it, embellishing, and you know, you can do as you like. I, I just wanted to give it a cute look. So now here are the two little birdhouses from the Dollar Tree, and I'm taking my pliers and pulling off the little, the little perch stands, the little sticks on there, and I'm going to paint them in the same nutmeg apple barrel paint, and I'm going to use more of this caulking, but I am using the tiny little tip instead on this one. I used a star tip on the other one, although you really couldn't tell because I am not a professional. <laughs> But, uh, but I just piped it as I'd like, and then I'm using some more of this striped fabric that's on the poster board to kind of help hide the holes and the, and the openings of the birdhouses. Try to create little doors and windows, and here I'm going to pipe some more of this caulking on there. Just give it a cute look. And here's my, my fingers are wet here, so I'm... I'm pushing it down and I continue with the other house and you can do as you'd like so I go ahead and frost the houses and the roofs as you can see the roofs are different on these two houses but so far they're looking super cute they're looking like gingerbread houses let's continue to work on it take more embellishments put more glue I decided to do little shingles on the roof. So now I'm going to paint the gingerbread men, or the gingerbread man, with some of this blue paint. Give him, give him some clothing. <laughs> I give him a little outfit. And I'm going to paint hers pink, a fuchsia pink. Give her a little dress. And I'm taking some of the white paint and just give it a, giving their little outfits a little bit more detail. Not too much because I am not a painter either. And now I'm taking this black marker just to draw their faces. I'm gonna keep a, I'm gonna keep it simple. And they're done. Okay, so now I decided to make some trees for the little village. So I'm taking these little party hats from the Dollar Tree, snipping off the elastic. I don't need them, but I'll set them aside for another project. And I'm going to paint them white. And I'm taking some of this mesh tubing from the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm taking some of these red chenille sticks and I'm gonna put them inside just to give them a little bit of uh, thickness and they're easy to put in they fit right in and you just have to kind of like snake it in like wiggle it in 
but they go right in. But just work your way and get them in there. Or you could just use the regular chenille sticks, that works too. I just decided to do this. So here are my little hats all painted and so now I'm taking my chenille sticks and I'm going to I'm going to take the white ones and tie them together ahead of time so I don't have a difficult time later. And I'm just kind of poking them through the very top hole. Just a, a starting point. And I add some hot glue to help keep them in place. And they, that way they don't slip out. Add a little bit of hot glue to the side. And I'm just going to roll it on there. Just kind of spin the, the little hat. And you're just going to work your way down until you have the whole hat covered in chenille sticks in this candy cane pattern. It's pretty easy. Just be careful with the glue. You can use those finger protectors if you need to. But again, I get to the end and so now I'm going to use some of these clips again. They are very versatile, very helpful, and they're they're gentle, they're not real difficult. So so here's my little my little, uh, I almost said hat, <laughs> my little tree, and I'm taking some of these pom-poms from the Dollar Tree's Christmas section, and I'm taking a big one for the top, and some little ones, I'm just going to place them wherever you could tell that the chenille sticks were joined together, so I put those there to kind of hide the little flaws here and there, and that just adds the ornaments, so now I'm taking some of these wooden dowels from the Dollar Tree and some of these little pots that I had from succulents, su some of the succulent plants that I used at another project and some foam that I had remnant pieces from another project and I'm going to create little stands for my trees and it's just as easy as gluing it all. I'm taking some of this white microfiber cleaning pad and I'm just going to add that to, to kind of make it look like snow. And I'm going to add it to my tree, and I'm done. Fifteen of these wooden planks from the Dollar Tree from Crafter Square so three sets of five and so I'm going to go in with some of the Aileen tacky glue and I'm going to assemble some boxes I'm going to assemble three wooden boxes so just like this I'll do these two and I'll use these containers of glue and Mod Podge to help hold everything together you can use hot glue but I like the lace tacky glue because then you don't have all those globs of glue everywhere. It makes for a better looking finished product. So I'll just keep, continue to make this box. Oh, and you can also use wood glue, of course. But I don't know, I just, I just have a lot of good luck with the Elaine's tacky glue with all, this, all these balsa wood items. So here's one box. And then I went ahead and used my heat gun to get everything nice and dry or you can wait overnight. So here they are, all nice and finished. And look, no globs of glue anywhere. They look fantastic. And now I'll go in with some of this apple barrel uh, paint in the color Nutmeg Brown. And I do a full coverage. I'm going to flip them upside down. And I'm going to go in with these beads that I purchased from Amazon some time ago. 
and I'm going to use red ones on the two outer boxes and then I'm going to use the gingham ones on the center one like this look how cute cute okay so now I'm gonna place them on their sides and I'm going to go in with these cut files that I created in the Cricut design space and they're just going to say stir whisk and scrape because those are the three baking actions that we do when we're baking so we stir our ingredients sometimes we'll whisk the eggs and then of course we have to scrape the bowl so those are my three words that I chose I'm just placing them on the sides of these gingerbread utensil holders so now I'm placing them on the other side and I'm taking these window clings which by the way were the inspiration for this whole video I felt like these window clings had a very vintage look so I'm going for vintage gingerbread decor so now I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I'm just going to add it to the back and adhere this little window cling to the side of my utensil holder and then I go ahead and do the same to a few others so I'm going to use these candy canes and then I use the lollipops and I'll continue until I get them all on there like this and I don't show it but I added some more words on the back ends of these boxes and you'll see that in a little bit see what I put on the back okay so here they are at this point and now I'm going to go in with this tulip puffy 3d paint and I'm going to give it a nice luscious frosted look like icing and I'm gonna let it drip give it that drip effect and I'll do all the seams to make it look like they were put together with this icing and once I get them all nice and covered with all this icing all I have to do now is add some bows for embellishments and that is it look how cute what do you guys think this board I think it's pallet wood and I found it outside in my backyard look how perfectly weathered it is almost looks like gingerbread yes I think it does so I went into the Cricut design space and I found this file on there and I'll, all I did was just cut it out and it says gingerbread for Christmas it's hard to read right here but yeah that's what it says so all I'm going to do and I didn't even do anything to this wood I just basically cleaned it up sanded it up a little bit and that is it look at that look at that that is so perfect and here I'm using my new scraper tool that I found at the Dollar Tree I finally found it I was so excited so just removing the contact paper is what I used for my vinyl and I also cut out a couple little gingerbread men a man and a woman and I'm going to add these to my board for embellishments as well as a few little candies, a peppermint candy and a candy cane. I'll add them for some embellishments as well. And then I'll go in with Mod Podge and do a full coverage and allow that to dry. And now I'm going to use my Tulip Puffy Paint and give this a nice iced look until it looks like this. Look how cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this ribbon that I purchased off of Amazon. I thought the size was perfect. And I'm just going to go around the perimeter sides of this board just to give it a, a nice finished look. So I'll begin here on the bottom where this cut is and I'll just go along the whole perimeter until it looks like this. Look how cute. So now I'm going to take a larger, a wider ribbon that I got from Amazon as well. I think these ribbons that they carry are so cute. And these came in a set and I'll link them in my description if you're interested. So I'm just going to cinch them in the center and create a little bow and take some of this thin red satin ribbon and tie it. And once I get that nice and tied, then I'll snip off the excess and I'll dovetail the ends and then I'll 
hot glue it to the bottom where that crack is. I thought about maybe utilizing that crack and make, making a stand, but then I just decided to use this bow and put it there. So I'm just gonna take some hot glue and adhere it to the bottom where the crack is at. And now I just stand it on a candle holder and that is it. What do you guys think? this really cute little acrylic box at family dollar I think and I thought it had such a vintage look I remember my mother having little boxes similar to these back in the 70s so here I'm taking this candy cane stripe fabric and I'm going to cut a nice strip of it because I want to line the inside of the box with this candy cane stripe fabric so here is my piece and then I go ahead and snip off the white border piece. We're not going to need that. And now all I'm going to do is take this fabric and line the inside of the box with it. Snip off the excess and once I have it nice and lined, then I'm taking some foam core board and I'm using the lid of the box to roughly give me the size of the square that I'll need. And I end up cutting four of these little squares and all I'm doing now is just placing them inside of the box to hold all the fabric in place. I'm not going to glue it or anything. And that's it. Look how cute. And you can use these to place candy inside. But I think they have a very vintage look for sure. So here I'm just going to add a few beads of glue. And I'm going to fold down all the excess fabric just to give everything a nice finished edge. And then for more embellishments then I'll add some of the little gingerbread men on the outside of the box and one on the very top of the boat because he's got to be the king and then that is it it is all done what do you guys think super cute For this DIY, I lost the beginning footage of this project, but I'll show you what I did. I took two of the pizza pans and I glued them back to back together. And then the middle portion, I placed these beads, these wooden beads from the Dollar Tree around the whole edge until they look like this. And then I went in with some Rust-Oleum primer paint in this rust color. And then I dry brush with this Home Deco Folk Art paint white Adirondack and did a dry brush along the whole edge so now to this point now what I'll do is I'll get going with some Mod Podge and this is in the satin finish until it looks like this and then allow this to dry fully both sides and here it is nice and finished now nothing will scratch off and now I'm going to go in with these window clings that I used in a previous project but I didn't use these large ones because they were too large for my project so I'm going to use them here and I'm going to place them in this manner and I'm going to use the rest of these window clings like so and once I get them all in place then I'll go back in with the same Mod Podge and the satin finish and do a complete covering and I'll actually glue them with the Mod Podge first and then do the Mod Podge on top as well. So just like this, here's Mod Podge, and here's how it looks, and we'll just allow this to dry, and when it's all dry, it looks like this, really cute. I wanted to share my Christmas gingerbread and peppermint hot cocoa bar and kitchen reveal. 